All right, Billy, on to the next list. We have the NFL's top 10 pass-catching tandems, or duos, essentially, in the NFL going into the upcoming 2021 season. You have not seen this list. Me and you have not looked at this list, so uh, you're going in blind. Are you ready? I'm ready. Now, we are going to first do some honorable mentions who Pro Football Focus has as could sneak up into the top 10 in 2021. This is only the top 10 plus some of these honorable mentions. So T. Higgins and Jamar Chase of the Cincinnati Bengals are down here in the honorable mentions. Pretty interesting that they just, uh, you know, say, screw Tyler Boyd, you know? So that's interesting. Um, but they obviously feel that those guys are going to do pretty good. Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy at the uh, Denver Broncos are in the honorable mentions as well. You also have Will Fuller and uh, Jalen Waddell of the Miami Dolphins down in the honorable mentions. Robert Woods and Cooper Cup of the Los Angeles Rams. Not in the top 10 in the honorable mentions list, Billy. Any of these kind of jump out at you as the honorable mentions? I actually really like the honorable mentions. I think they're all worthy of being there, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm with it. So I would, far, I'm pleased with the list. I would maybe put Woods and Cup in the top well, 10. Depends. I don't know who's in the top 10. It depends who's up there. That's right. So number 10, we have George Kittle and Debo Samuel of the San Francisco 49ers. Okay. I didn't realize we were going to be doing... Interesting. It's okay. just pass-catching tandems. It could be anything. Tight ends, yeah, running right. backs, wide receivers. Okay. So, that's... If that's, that's the, I really still think... I, I would leave, I think, Woods and Cup in the honorable mentions. If it's everything, mm -hmm. I'm with Woods and Cup in the honorable mentions. But I, I could already feel that I'm going to have something to say about... Oh, you're wow. going to have something to say. I, I can feel the gears turning in you. Number nine, we have Calvin Ridley and Kyle Pitts of the Atlanta Falcons. What is with the hype train for Calvin Ridley? The the hype train for Ridley and Pitts, for that matter, by the way. On a previous <laughs> list, they had Pitts as the number four tight end. Calvin Ridley, the number 11 wide receiver going, or no, the... Yeah, the number 11 wide receiver going into the 2021 season. They had Ridley at number 11, Pitts at number 4. Combined, they equal number 9. Like, I really... I give him credit for being consistent because I guess, you know, 4 and 11 get 9 in a way. I understand that. But to me, Kyle, Calvin Ridley is, is just a good wide receiver. Like, I don't think that he is anything more than just a solid, good wide out. Like... At no point have we ever played Calvin Ridley. I was like, damn, this dude is fucking. This dude's unstoppable. Like, I just have never felt that way. And he's I, never he's never pulled a Julio where he's just murdered us. Hey, right, I just don't get it. Like, I don't get the I don't get the love for him. Like, he's just a pretty good wide receiver to me. And I, I don't even mean that disrespectfully, because I do think he is good. But to say that he is this, you know, primed for a breakout, I'm just not feeling it. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll, we will see with Ridley and Pitts. I mean, yeah, we'll see. I mean, both of them have loads of potential. Yeah. I just don't know if they're there yet. No. You know, that's kind of, again, one where I would say Woods and Cup, maybe put them in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I would take Woods and Cup over uh, Ridley and Pitts for sure, actually. Yeah. Number eight, Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys. This one bugs me. You 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 do not enjoy Amari Cooper that much, do you? Another guy who I'm just like, come on, like Amari Cooper. Yeah, I just think he's an overhyped player. Mm. I'm sorry. I I, I, I like ugh. consistent issues dropping the ball. The Cowboys paid him like he's the best receiver in the league, and he's not, nor has he ever been. Like, who did he get drafted with? The Two, Raiders. No, no, no. Who's the other receiver who came out? C.D. Lamb? No, 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 no. When Amari Cooper, I can't remember who. Oh, um, it was Kevin White. Okay, so he's way better than Kevin White. I was going to say. I got, I got yeah. Uh, C.D. Lamb, I do think, shows the potential. He could be really good. I don't, I mean, I, I, it's funny because the Cowboys are kind of like a three-headed monster because I wouldn't, Michael Gallup is, uh, I wouldn't under, underestimate Michael Gallup either. But to say that Amari, I just, oh, man. Yeah. To me, it's just another guy. He's like a lot of flesh in, in the pan, Amari Cooper. I just don't see like... All right. What, what, what are your thoughts on the Cowboys there? I mean, it's it's an interesting thing. I I, am, I like Amari Cooper, I would say, more than you do. But 
CD Lamb and Gallup. I mean, I like both those guys a lot. Um, I really do, but I just feel like I feel like they're not there yet. You know, I'm like... putting uh, Woods and Cup over Amari and anybody from Dallas. Okay, okay. Number seven, Odell Beckham Jr. and Jar- and uh, Jarvis Landry of the Cleveland Browns coming in at number seven. Thoughts on that? Yeah. Hey, this whole list. Okay. You, you, I told you, I told you you were going to start losing your mind. Now I will say Jarvis Landry, there's still a lot of Jarvis Landry supporters out there, right? People will just go, Hey, Jarvis Landry's solid. You know, I mean, you'll even, you'll even, I've talked to Cleveland Browns fans before who like Jarvis Landry more than Odell Beckham Jr. Say, I almost, I'm not going to say Jarvis Landry is better than Odell Beckham. Cause I don't think that's true. But I would take Jarvis Landry on my team before I took Odell Beckham on my team. You know, like mm. to me, That's Odell odd. Beckham is living off of reputation and name, and it's just um, he's. I, I, I have it like to me. I'm not an Odell Beckham Jr. fan at all. I really I don't like Jarvis Landry either. The Cleveland Browns, that's super overrated. The Browns were better after Odell got hurt last year. I don't think he's a good fit for them. I don't think that he'll excel with Baker. I, I would put them actually way out of the. I wouldn't even put them anywhere near this list. They shouldn't even be in the honorable mention to me. So what I was saying, I don't know if you heard, but I've talked to Browns fans before who prefer Jarvis Landry to Odell Beckham. And I would I totally agree with that sentiment. So it's interesting. Yeah. You know, I think people still just buy into the hype of Odell Beckham, even though he's had injury problems and he hasn't been as near, not nearly as productive as he was at the beginning of his season, at the beginning of his career. So it's interesting. It it really when is interesting. Odell Beckham, I feel like, has struggled. And I know he's on the Browns, and that's a small market team. So obviously everybody, you know, you get hindered by that in a sense. But Odell Beckham, to me, has struggled to find relevance in a very long time. And I, I don't, you know, I, I, I'm very, I'm just, I'm very unimpressed with the, with the current trajectory of his career. Has Odell Beckham only played for the Giants and Cleveland? Yes. Okay. Number six, we have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett of the Seattle Seahawks. I'll just give my opinion real quick. I think this is a solid ranking. I mean, I like both those guys. I think they're really good wide receivers. And sometimes I don't like Metcalf's attitude, per se. But, I mean, I think they're a dangerous combination. Your thoughts? Agree 100%. Great combination. They play great with Russell. I'm not a huge fan of DK Metcalf's attitude either. But I do think on the field, in tandem, they complement each other well. That's a good receiving core, good ranking. Way better. I mean, the gap to me between six and seven is colossal. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not even close. Number five, we have Stephon Diggs and Cole Beasley of the Buffalo Bills. Now, if it was anybody, you know, I mean, if Stephon Diggs had a legitimate, like, I'm I'm not trying to knock Cole Beasley. But they had him at, what, number 22 ranked wide receiver during the wide receivers ranking video, right? They had him above Antonio Brown. Above AB. So just the Cole Beasley love continues here, which is interesting. I mean, Stephon Diggs, it makes sense, right? If you paired up, say, Tyler Lockett with Stephon Diggs, like a Jarvis Landry, or like, you know, really any of these other guys down here with Stephon Diggs, it would make a lot of sense. But it just feels like, to me, Stephon Diggs is really carrying this duo, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a one-sided duo, for sure. It's it's almost like saying Stephon Diggs and anybody. But I do think Cole Beasley, he carries his own weight in in, in his way. You know, he, he's good at what he's good at. He mm-hmm. may be limited, but he's good at what he's good at. Again, though, I, I, I actually I would put Lockett and Metcalf ahead of these guys, I think. It's just tough for me. I'm just looking at the stats. Not everybody will be able to see this, but it's tough for me to accept a duo where Stephon Diggs is phenomenal. Cole Beasley has never had a thousand receiving yards in his career. That's that's tough. That's that's tough. Yeah, that's That's tough. tough. So to me, Diggs. Yeah, if there was anybody else paired up with Diggs who was a legitimate like a thousand yard guy, I'd agree. But Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley feels like a third option, right? Well, he yeah he he is he is yeah. <laughs> you know he's supposed to be that third wide receiver, not a number two. So I don't know. I, I would. would say, we're about to go into the top five, right? Mm-hmm. The top four. 
I, I would say if the Vikings and the Bucks aren't like super highly represented in this list, I'm going to be upset. Okay. They should be super highly represented. And I got a really good argument coming for the Bucks. Sure. Number four, we have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's read. Injuries plagued both Evans and Godwin's 2020 seasons, but they still performed admirably and were major pieces to the Buccaneers' Super Bowl puzzle. Don't forget that these two ranked 5th and 1st respectively in Pro Football Focus's wins above replacement metric in 2019 when they were mostly healthy. Evans endured the lowest graded season of his career in 2020, but has been one of the five highest graded players at the position since entering the league in 2014. Now that he's fully healthy and, in head coach Bruce Arians' eyes, probably the best shape he has been in this time of year, expect Evans to revert to his dominant form in 2021. He had 1,000 yards last year, by the way. Uh, Godwin is also becoming is also coming off the lowest-graded season of his four-year career, but he has still been among the highest-graded players at the position since Tampa Bay drafted him in the third round in 2017. The fact that Tom Brady and the Buccaneers still managed to win the Super Bowl with Godwin's it, with Godwin and Evans not being anywhere near their ceilings is a scary thought for defenses in 2021. So, Billy, with all of this being said, why are they not higher? What is your what what is your uh, thoughts here, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin at number four? I might have just realized why they're not higher. Originally, I was upset. I was like, oh my gosh, why would you put him at four? That's ridiculous. All of that. I just figured it out though. This is a, a a list based around duos, tandems, right? And you could have any position. So I just realized the Bucks are going to be on here a second time, and Antonio Brown and Gronk are going to be listed separately, I think. That's what's coming, right, in the next three. It's got to be. Because to tell me that Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are only fourth, I mean, and, and again, they, it's funny because they say the same thing that they were talking about in the, in the earlier lists in their paragraph there. They talked about how the injuries held them back and stuff like that so but this is supposed to be right a projection going forward so the injuries of last year shouldn't really weigh that much like are you anticipating that they'll get hurt again or you know because uh, that bothers me and again i would say the only th like the only thing and i've said this before in the in, in the other video the only thing that i would say that holds these guys back is just the fact that they play with so many other good players like he can't, you know, Mike Evans can't put up the numbers that a guy like Devontae Adams might put up because there's just you gotta spread the wealth. You know, yeah. like there's it's just not enough opportunity to go around to everyone. But to tell me that like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are the perfect yin and yang to one another. They are exactly what you would want to build a receiving core around. You know, they fit and play off of each other like, perfectly. So to say that they're not like I, they should they should have been top two to me. That's lame. I'm upset about it, James. So I do want to say, uh, like I'm, we're trying very hard. Like we're not coming off as biased. Like it's just point blank. Like everybody assumes that Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are like maybe top one or top two receiving tandem. Like I know that we like may come off as biased in some of these rankings lists, but you know we're not trying to. The team just won the Super Bowl. I think we've been pretty fair in some of our assessments. Would you agree? I would, and this is what I want to say as far as that. Our, our you know, our, our, our bias, potentially. Okay, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans just went through a massive change in their professional careers, right? They got a brand-new quarterback for the first time. And not only did they get a brand-new quarterback, but they got a quarterback who came in with no offseason, all of that stuff, and eventually changed the entire system, right? And they got a quarterback who is very smart and understands – lack of risks and how much a lack of a risk could help the overall team, right? Mm -hmm. But the problem with no risks from the quarterback position is it does limit the statistical output of receivers and tight ends and things like that because we're not taking those risks. But just two years ago, when they still played together the same tandem, right, they were literally unstoppable. And people forget two years ago, 2019, both of them left the season early and missed the last few games, respectively, each with a hamstring injury. But Chris Godwin had nine touchdowns, 86 catches, and 1,300 yards in 2019, which is a, a ton by himself. And Mike Evans had, had 1,100 yards, 67, 67 catches, and eight touchdowns 
by himself in 2019, and neither played a full season. So to me, you know, you got to like, oh man, it just, it's cr- like people forget so quick, I guess. That's what I'm thinking. Like they have no equity. Like to say Mike, Mike Evans has never had a bad season. You know, like I could argue that Chris Godwin has never had a bad season. You know, like considering how he worked his way up, he's never had a bad year. Mm-hmm. Mike Evans has never been under a thousand yards. He's never really dipped like catches. You know, he's never been below like 65, I want to say. So you're talking about consistent, solid output from two guys that are good at different things. And and put them together, like I said, they're the perfect yin and yang to one another. And to see them rank this low, it's disappointing, man. Yeah. Number three. Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson of the Minnesota Vikings. Number two, Julio Jones and A.J. Brown of the Tennessee Titans. And number one, Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs. Billy, I know you called it basically as soon as you realized, wait a minute, they can put a tight end and a wide receiver together? I see where this is going. But your thoughts on one, two, and three all above Mike Evans and Chris Godwin here. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at three above them. I think Adam Thielen is severely underrated. It's a shame. Justin Jefferson looked really good as a rookie, so I have no reason that he's not going to continue that success. I think they're really good. I think that's a super solid tandem. I went in on Tyreek Hill a little bit on the receiver thing, didn't I? I talked about how Mike Evans should be way better. A bit. You, know, you said he was one dimensional. I said he's one-dimensional. And I do think that's true. But I, at the same time, if we were going to put... So we're, it kind of comes down to an argument of four people, right? It's Chris Godwins, Mike Evans, Tyreek Hill, and Kelsey. Out of those four guys, I do think the best is probably Kelsey. And simultaneously, I think the worst is probably Tyreek Hill. So the Bucks kind of come sandwiched in the middle to me. So I, I do understand the argument to say the Chiefs are better, I just, I just think Travis Kelsey is like, I think he's outstanding. I think he's really a very great player. So, I, you know, that's a, t- that's a tough one for me. Travis, yeah, man, Tyreek Hill's not bad, but he's definitely the fourth worst out of those four because Chris Godwin can just do so much more for you on a football field. Mike Evans can do so much more for you. And Travis Kelsey is really he's a superior, special talent for sure to me. But... Oh, that's a tough. Who was that number two? Julio Jones and AJ Brown. Yeah, well, that one. They should be behind the Bucks. I think the Bucks. I, I might put the Bucks at, at two or three. Okay. Depending on two or three, and I think that that you know I bumped the Titans back. I can make an argument for the Vikings or the Chiefs to be better than the Bucks or equal to the Bucks. You would say put Jones and Brown at four. Maybe the Bucks at three or two. Thielen, yeah. Jefferson. Kelsey Hill, number one. Yeah. Okay. Kelsey. Wait. No, I, I just th- I just think Kelsey is really that good. I think he's that good. Mm-hmm. I do agree with a lot of what you said. I mean, me personally, I might have Thielen and Jefferson maybe one, maybe Evans and Godwin at two, Travis Kelsey three, Jones Brown four, maybe like that. But regardless, I mean, hey, they're in the top four out of thirty-two. You know, pass catching tandems. Right. That's pretty good. You know, you could make some slight, some slight tweaks here and there, but uh, and look, Mike, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, number four, uh, pass catching tandems in the NFL going into the 2021 I, season. I gotta raise my hand because you brought up this point with another list, and I gotta bring it up here because it's a great point here. You talked about if this list were extended to 40, right, hypothetically, or 50, so on and so forth. Uh, how many, how many more tandems on the Bucks could you put in this list? Because I mentioned jokingly Antonio Brown and Gronk being another tandem that could maybe be on this list. Could you slip them in? Could you slip in a duo with Giovanni Bernard as one of the two? I think that is an argument that the Bucks can have that none of these other teams can have, and it shows how deep we are. All these other teams, their two best guys are their duo. Well, our two best guys are our duo, but we have other duos if behind. You- you know, if you dropped it to 32, you did all the way to 32. Maybe Brown and Gronk get somewhere in the 30 range. You know, maybe. But I, 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 I can't think of all the pass catching tandems off the top of my head. You know, 
I, I bet you can, and that's okay because Pro Football Focus did the work for us. AB was what, 25th? Gronk was 9th? So that would peg them, what, at like 17th? Yeah, Brown was the 24th best wide receiver, and then Gronk was the 9th best tight end. So if you put those two in tandem, that's in the teens somewhere. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, so yeah, a- I mean that, that just goes to show the fortune that the Buccaneers have right now in the situation that they're in, right? That's crazy depth for the Bucs. Right. So, guys, let us know what you think about this down in the comment section below. Uh, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin at number four as the top ten uh, receiving ta- pass catchers tandem uh, going into the upcoming 2021 season. Guys, if you're new, go ahead and subscribe, like the video. Go subscribe to Billy at Owen the C here on YouTube. We're trying to get him to 1,000 subscribers, and that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed, and we will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.